live from Walt Disney World Speedway in Orlando, Florida. ABC Sports welcomes you to the opening race of the 2000 Indy Racing League season, the Delphi Indy 200. The campaign has many new things this year, including some new yet familiar faces. Here's Jack Aroot. And one of them, Bob, is not new as far as IndyCar racing is concerned, Al Lunser Jr. Way in the back of the pack because qualifying gets washed out. What do you do? Go, wait. Well, what we're going to do is just watch everybody because everybody's on labels and so are we. So it takes about four laps for them to get up to temperature. And so we're just going to have to be really, really super careful. And i just like to say hi to my kids. Let's go to the front of the grid for more stories. Vince Welch. Greg Ray is the series champion. He starts from the point today. Greg, what will the strategy be? You're going to be pacing the field. Well, unfortunately, we missed three of our on-track uh, sessions this weekend, so our game plan's out the window. We just hope that uh, the team and ours prepared well and that all our experience pays off because we're going to have to wing it. Greg Gray, he starts from the point. Bob Jenkins? Well, the long wait is just about over. The winter has been long, but right now it's time to go racing. J.T. Battenberg. For the first time in the new millennium, Gentlemen, start your engines. We are just moments away from getting this 2000 season underway. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins. We welcome you to our coverage all year long of the Indy Racing League either on ABC or ESPN. Now the story this weekend has been weather. It rained out yesterday's qualifying session. In fact, these cars have not been on the track for practice since Thursday. They had no warm up here today. You couple that with the fact that we have new chassis, new engines and new drivers. And Tom Sneva, who won the 1983 Indy 500, there's gotta be a lot of emotion going through these drivers' minds right now. Well, no question, Bob. They've just come from a driver's meeting where they talked about respect patience, consideration for fellow drivers. But you, you, you start a new season, it's been a long winter, you got new equipment, new faces out there. Sometimes the emotion and the adrenaline can cover up all those rational thoughts. Now, you couple that with the fact that we've got a starting grid that doesn't necessarily have the fastest guys at the front. I think if I'm at home and I got seat belts on my couch, it's time to buckle up. The grid was determined by points from last year and for the new teams this year by practice speed. So on the pole is the defending champion, Greg Ray, who won three races en route to the title last year, which wasn't decided until the final race at Texas where he beat Kenny Breck by 37 points for the overall title. Row number two, Mark Dismore, winner of the season finale at Texas last October, and Robbie McGee. Row number three, Buddy Lazier looking for his third win in the series alongside Eddie Cheever Jr. Now he is the only repeat winner here at Walt Disney World in 97 and in last year's event, he beat Scott Goodyear by five seconds. Going to row number four, Scott Sharp and Scott Goodyear. In row number five, Billy Boat and Eliseo Salazar this year driving for A.J. Foyt. The sixth row, Buzz Calkins who won the first race here in 96 and Jacques Lazier. The seventh row, Stefan Gregoire, the fastest in practice, and John Hollinsworth. The eighth row, Donnie Beachler and rookie Jared Schrader. Row number nine, Davey Hamilton, the only driver to compete in all 35 events so far in the IRL, and alongside him, Robbie Unzer. The tenth row, a couple of rookies, Sam Hornish Jr., the youngest driver in the field at age 20, and Doug Dodaro, a short track specialist. In the 11th row, another rookie, Nicholas Johnson, and Robbie Buell, who won in New Hampshire in 1997. The 12th row, Tice Carlson from the midget and sprint ranks, and there you'll also find Al Unzer Jr. He, of course, is making his IRL debut here this afternoon, but he is a two-time Indy 500 winner in 92 and 94. And in the last row, a couple of other rookies, Ayrton Dare and John Herb. That's the way they'll line up for this 200-mile contest, and Jack Aroot will be keeping a close eye on some of those starting at the back of the field. One of those, Bob, you should look at is Robbie Buell. Buell and company decided at the last minute to come racing this year. He actually got the car and the word on Christmas Eve. They have put this team back together, and they are going to come from the back. They were very quick in practice. Vince Welch. 
Stefan Gregoire has consistently been the quickest in these limited practice sessions, but in 32 Indy Racing League events, Gregoire has finished on the podium just once. His best start is a sixth, but this team believes it is ready to compete for a championship, and that begins today here in Orlando. This is a one-mile racetrack, so they will go 200 laps around here. As we mentioned, the defending champion of this event is Eddie Cheever. And the purse for this afternoon is over a million dollars. 26 cars now getting the tires warmed up, making sure all the temperatures are right in the cars before we turn them loose for high speeds. We will have six onboard cameras complementing today's coverage. And Tom Sneba, will they be able to take it easy those first few laps? Or when you strap the helmet on, do you turn into a different person? Well, sometimes when you strap the helmet on, it's hard for the cosmic rays to get through. And, uh, you know, you don't think as well as you should. But it's adrenaline at the start of these races, and you just got to cope with it. And uh, that's what these guys are paid to do. We have partly cloudy skies here this afternoon right now. They are predicting about a 30% chance of showers later this afternoon, but that should not come until well after we have completed this race. We woke up to bright sunshine this morning. It was very welcome after a total washout of qualifying yesterday. The field begins to bunch up now, and next time around they should be getting the green flag for the start of the Delphi Indy 200 here at Walt Disney World Speedway. The field beginning to form up nicely. Greg Ray, Jeff Ward up on the front row with Mark Dismore, who was the most recent winner in the Indy Racing League. He won the season finale last year at Texas, and alongside him is Robbie McGee, who takes over in the Treadway ride. Off of corner number four, they come, anticipating green the green, line, green and line. they get it. The 2000 Indy Racing League season is underway. Jumping off to a pretty sizable advantage here as they round corner number two onto the short stretch. Now into number three, completing lap number one. It's Greg Ray out in front. He led the most laps in IRL competition in 1999, 464 laps, and he continues to add to that today. Running in the second spot is Jeff Ward, and right behind him in the third position would be Lazier, and he's in that new Riley and Scott chassis, Tom. Well, that's a brand new car this year, and uh, they've really come forward. We got a yellow. We have a spin two. between turns Safety two two and three. Getting. That is Jacques Lazier. Tricelli racing driver who just got sideways, lost it between turns two and three, and was able to keep the engine running, so he'll drop into the back of the field and will be able to uh, get going again may have flat spotted the tires requiring him to come in but it's not a serious accident it does however result in our first caution of the afternoon and so Greg Ray has the lead with Jeff Ward second Buddy Lazier is third followed by Mark Dismore and Robbie McGee back at Walt Disney World in a moment Delphi Indy 200 will be getting the green flag here in just a moment. Here's what happened to cause our first caution. We're on board with Scott Goodyear, and look just ahead of him. That's Jacques Lazier running by himself, just got out from under him. Well, he was, he was by himself, but he just passed Goodyear. Now look at him stack up here behind. They see Lazier, they all get out of the, they jump out of the throttle, and uh, it's a tight, tight racetrack. Things happen in a hurry. Fortunately, it was only a one-car incident, and he has come in to change tires. Jacques Lazier has will be falling into the back of the pack for the restart, which should be coming up here in just a moment. Greg Ray continues to set the pace with Jeff Ward running in second place and Buddy Lazier having moved up from his fifth starting position to third. There's the green flag. We are back to racing at Walt Disney World Speedway. You can see Eddie Cheever in the red and white car there. Got a good restart underneath. Pass Robbie McGee, who this year is driving for Treadway Racing, and Cheever makes the pass. Eddie's in the only Infinity car in the field, so he looks like he's going forward at this time, Bob. Move him up to fifth position now, with Robbie McGee dropping back to sixth place. Interval is almost a second now between Ray and Ward. Last lap was turned at 148.865 miles an hour by the leader of the race, Greg Ray. We continue to watch Eddie Cheever and 
Robbie McGee here who are running in the fifth and sixth positions. There is Ward, Lazier, and Mark Dismore running second, third, and fourth as Greg Ray separates himself now to more than a second and a third over Jeff Ward. And Ray is about to come up to try to put a lap on Jacques Lazier. Well, Lazier had to make that pit stop to change the tires, and uh, it's put him out of sequence and way behind. Jeff Ward driving for A.J. Foyt this year. Foyt has two cars. He announced Jeff Ward as his driver late last year after the season ended, but it wasn't until just recently that he added the second driver, Eliseo Salazar, to the team. Well, the yellow car there is uh, Greg Ray. He's obviously having trouble getting by Lazier. It's a very, uh oh. Oh, Robbie McGee is sideways, slides through the grass. He was trying to pass Eddie Cheever there and a nice job of driving by McGee who did not spin. He kept it going. He did throw up some dirt, it appeared, on the racetrack as he got into that area between the pit lane and the racetrack itself. The caution does not come out. It remains green and all that resulted there was Robbie McGee losing several positions. But Bob, they are going to have to change the nose already. The Energizer crew is going to work knowing that the possibility is the front nose cone has been damaged. So we'll watch for McGee to come in for a pit stop before too much longer. That was Buzz, Buzz Calkins and the red car is just going forward, Bob. He's up to sixth position now. Scott Sharp is in seventh. There's Scott Goodyear in the bright yep. yellow car. Again, at the front, you can see the yellow car still being held up or not being able to get by Jacques Lazier. And, and that is dis disturbing Thomas Knapp, the team manager for Greg Ray. He has told Greg on the radio, be assertive with Jacques. You've got to get by him. And now as he goes into the second corner, he does indeed pass Jacques Lazier and puts him a lap down. Now, as you continue to watch our rundown of the positions on your scoring chart there at the top left of the screen you will notice some arrows that indicates that a driver either moved up or down in the previous lap well, that's a tough call you know he, he gets ray gets a comment from the pit guys to uh but he's let lazier going by right there lazier passing jeff ward and taking over the second position and greg ray was really held up there by jacques lazier and that caused the interval to shrink by about half but since ray has gotten around lazier it now means that he's able to put about two seconds between himself and jacques brother buddy who's running in second Again, a tough call from the pits, though, to ask your driver to be assertive, especially this early in the race. You've got to take what you can get and don't force an issue. On board with Buddy Lazier. For you Al Unser Jr. fans, he has moved up to 17th position in the first 16 laps of this race. We understand also that John Hollinsworth clipped the wall in turn number two right in front of Al Unser Jr., but it did not result in a spin. 16 laps completed here at Walt Disney World Speedway in the Delphi Indy 200. Greg Ray leads Buddy Lazier. Back at Walt Disney World Speedway, and just as you rejoin us, we have a spin up in turn number one. It is the number 44 car. Davey Hamilton. That is Davey Hamilton, who, as we mentioned, is the only driver to have started all of the Indy Racing League events since its inception back in 19. 96. This is in turn number one. Not uh, very hard contact. We'll take a look on replay. And again, looked like he was riding by himself, not racing with anyone. Kind of backed it in the wall, though. Well, that's real early in the corner for the car to jump loose, so I'm not sure what happened there. But that was very, very early uh, before the apex of the corner and uh, sort of an unusual place to spin. Let's get more from the pit area. Here's Vince Welch. I spoke with Davey Hamilton right before the race, and he was concerned about this event because he was in a race car that he had only 32 laps in. Davey said, I've never been in a car before this weekend. We get 32 laps. I've never worked with this crew before. He was concerned about coming out under those conditions and running the event today. It may have resulted in a very early out for Davey Hamilton crashing in turn number one. ABC's presentation of the Indy 200 at Walt Disney World will return after these messages and a word from our ABC stations.
live at Walt Disney World Speedway, Orlando, Florida. Caution for a couple of reasons. Davey Hamilton crashed in turn one. He's okay. And then Scott Sharp coasted to a stop over between turns two and three. He has made it to the pit area. Vince, what's going on? Well, his team pushing him to the pit area. He is stuck in fourth gear. So a crew member told me they're going to have to bring him in, take uh, the gearbox out, change the gears. But uh, Scott Sharp with four Indy Racing League career victories, hoping to take the overall lead in victories today. Not going to happen with a gear problem. Vince, I'm with Bob Reap, who is the senior vice president of marketing for the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And Bob, we have a very big announcement to make. We certainly do, Jack. Uh, today we're here to announce that Northern Light, the world's largest internet search engine, has signed on to be our series title sponsor. And we are just exuberant about the deal. There's a five-year, $50 million deal. Demonstrates their commitment to racing. Now, wait a minute. $50 million, that's a whole lot of Super Bowl ads. It sure is. And, and this is the largest internet sports marketing deal to date. So we are very pleased that they're showing their commitment to the long term for the league. Well, Bob, I think that does say a lot about where the IRL is headed. From now on, the Northern Light Indy Racing League. How many zeros are in 50 million? <laughs> we may have been a little premature. Davey Hamilton, after appearing to try to get out of the car, apparently has been put on a stretcher. They're going to put him in the ambulance and check him over. So we'll take another break here under caution and be right back with more of the Delphi Indy 200. Still under caution here at Walt Disney World Speedway. Scott Sharp remains in pit lane. The big game is tomorrow, but coming up next, it's an exclusive look back at the exciting 1999 NFL season. The surprises, disappointments, and amazing turnarounds. NFL Films and ABC Sports takes you from the locker rooms to the playing fields on the road to the Super Bowl next on ABC. Your home for Super Bowl 34 and the NHL All-Star Game. Jack Aroot, I haven't decided who to root for tomorrow. Well, let me help you out, Bob. If you're a fan of open wheel racing, you might want to root for the St. Louis Rams and their head coach, Dick Vermeil, because he has a long storied legacy in open wheeled motorsports. I learned about, you know, and on the small scale, uh, how critical detail preparation was for my dad's old sprint cars. You know, you never know what might break down. So you you every single detail you go over and over and over and I think that helps us a little bit in football. The drivers are competitors, just like the football players are competitors. They get ready to race, they get ready to play. They go through some of the same uh, nervous tension, emotion uh, in preparation to, to compete. Uh, they, when the driver makes a mistake, you know, you don't get a five yard penalty. His dad, the late Louis Vermeil, was actually the president of a Northern California sprint car organization and he and his brother, Dick, they actually built up some and restored some of the sprint cars that his dad campaigned in Northern California. One final note, when I asked Dick Vermeil what were some of the things that attracted him to his wife of 40 plus years, Carol said, hey, she knew how to build a carburetor. Well, that makes it easy for me knowing Dick's that involved in, uh, in racing because I've been spending most of my time handicapping the coin flip and I'm going with tails. <laughs> All right, let's go on board with Scott Sharp here before he had his uh, problem. Remember, they're using sequential gearboxes this year, and we'll see what happened as he drove through the accident site. You can see him right hand. He's trying to find something. And again, you hear the motor rev up. It's obviously in between gears. Uh, Vince reported it might have been stuck in fourth, but I think he would have drove into the pits if it was stuck in a gear. So I think he's between two gears. He can't make it to the pits. You can hear the motor rev up. Again, he can't find a selection. Down to Vince Welch. Allenser Jr. up to 14th now. He has stayed out on the track while some of the others had pitted. Rick Gallus said the car is handling well. A little Al mentioned that it's tough to pass on this track, but this team, the Gallus ECR racing team, stressing, stressing patience here in the early going with Allenser Jr. They know it's a long race, and before long, he'll be moving to the front. Jack Aroot. Guys, I want to show you something. You may call this telemetry. You may actually say it's computerized readout back from the car. It tells you things like the steering angle, the weight jacker. You've got every vital statistic here. When I asked Ed Pink what it was, he says it's kind of a heart monitor for a race car. The lifeblood of uh, what's going on in the race car can be determined by uh, looking at that information. I'll tell you, if we had a heart monitor on the drivers, you could <laughs> definitely see what was going on out there. Here's a look at how the rookies are doing. Jared Schrader, the best, who is currently running in the ninth position. Well, that's a Tony Stewart-owned car, yep. so, uh, you know, a lot of experience on that team, but a, a young driver that's doing a great job. Several drivers did make pit stops during this caution period. We have 18 cars on the lead lap. 
Superb, Dodero, Jacques Lazier, Hollinsworth, Dare, Sharp, who is still on pit road, and of course, Davey Hamilton are the cars not on the lead lap. A lot of guys that are, if they're off on their chassis settings, will use a yellow as a chance to maybe correct that, especially if you're not up front in the field. All right, we go back to green now, and we'll see if Buddy Lazier can give Greg Ray a challenge. Oh, he goes down into turn number one and stays right with Greg Ray. This is inside Buddy's car. He got a good run on him, but he got into some bad air, and uh, Greg was able to get away a little. And there That's is Sharp. Scott Sharp, who has gone back onto the racetrack. They've replaced the gearbox, we understand, in that car, and so Sharp continues in the race. However, he is down nine laps, but it certainly would have been more than that. The problem had occurred during uh, a green period. That red car is Buzz Calkins. Buzz has made the biggest advancement so far in the race. He's done a nice job. Everybody trying to get around uh, Scott Sharp. There is Scott Goodyear and a car down on the pit lane. That is the 27 car of Nicholas Johnson. We understand he did spin, but kept going. Well, these guys are getting away with some stuff. Uh, a lot of times you can't spin cars and get away with it in any car racing, but we've seen two today. Yep, Robbie McGee spun earlier, did a half spin down in turn number one and kept going. And McGee has fought his way back up into the top 10. He is currently in the 10th position. There is Greg Ray, Buddy Lazier running about a second behind in th second position with Mark Dismore in third. Well, on the restart, you see, you see that uh, Lazier got a good run on Greg Ray, but uh, once they got strung out and got the cars up to speed, the smaller motors make a, put a premium on these restarts and timing things. Tom, it looks as if maybe the restarts are a little more exciting because of the new gearbox as well. Instead of that H pattern, we've got that transverse gearbox. It's sequential, so now you don't miss a shift as often. Well, you shouldn't. It's just like running a video game, uh, Jack, and, and I know you're pretty good at those, but uh, it sure makes the driver's job easier. But again, reliability a problem. We see Sharp in the pits with a, with a new gearbox problem. We're watching Eddie Cheever and Scott Goodyear battling for the sixth position. That's inside Sharp's car, looking forward to uh, Scott Goodyear in the, in the bright Penzo. That's where he has come out to uh, run on the racetrack, but again, he is 10 laps down on board with Scott Goodyear now, who was voted the most popular driver in the Northern Light Indy Racing League in 1999. Right now, he's stalking Eddie Cheever, the only two-time winner of this event, including last year. Great close racing in the back of the pack, everywhere in the pack. And uh, this track, the drivers uh, say it's one of the toughest racetracks to get set up for. Real short straightaways, and it makes it tough to pass people. Looking for Robbie McGee trying to pick up a position. We're at Walt Disney World Speedway, Orlando, Florida, for the opening race of the 2000 Northern Light Indy Racing League season. And we have completed 42 laps of the race. Greg Ray has been the only leader so far. He has just about a four-second advantage on Buddy Lazier with Mark Dismore, Buzz Hawkins, and Jeff Ward completing the top five. We've had several cautions, and we have another caution. This is for debris, however. The only crash of any substance was Davey Hamilton, who was put on a stretcher. They're checking him over in the infield medical center. There are the top 10 after 43 of 200 laps. We'll take another break and be right back with more from Walt Disney World Speedway. Back at Walt Disney World Speedway, we are under caution because of debris on the racetrack. And we had pit stops during this caution. Everybody on the lead lap coming in, and here is Greg Ray making his stop. The yellow car at the head of the pits. All the leaders came in. Buddy, Buddy Lazier, Lazier was second, and he came in. Quick work from the Menard team to get Greg Ray out there in good fashion. There's Buddy Lazier getting the work done in his car. Well, you can see they were putting front wing in the car. They were all pushing, and they got in traffic, so they added front wing for more now powers. Now this also happened as Robbie Unzer was exiting the pits. And he pulled away as the uh, Jackman was not out of the way completely, knocked him over, but no problem there. Well, first pit stop of the year, and uh, you know, it takes these, while, these guys a while to get the hang of things, but quick feet is necessary. Great views you're seeing of the race are being brought to us this afternoon by the Monster.com newest blimp. This is the first IRL race Monster.com has provided 
aerial coverage. The big orange thing in the sky. Bob, real quickly, Eddie Cheever has a radio problem. He cannot hear his crew, so he just radioed back and said, guess I'll have to do my own spotting. Green flag comes out. We are back to racing now. Billy Boat, Robbie Buell, Donnie Beachler, Sam Hornish Jr. all made pit stops earlier, and so they are at the front of the field. Greg Ray is in fifth position. We'll see how quickly he can dispose of some of these drivers who did pit earlier. Again, I'm not sure all those guys pitted. Some of these guys might be trying a two-stop uh, well, two right. two yep. race, but some of them now, the leaders, are going to have to stop three times. Yeah, Billy Boat and Donnie Beachler have not pitted yet, but Robbie Buell and Sam Hornis Jr. have. are on board with John Hollinsworth. John is one lap down back in 19th position. Again, they tested pretty well here before qualifying, so they're having some kind of trouble that we can't uh, see right now. There's Robbie Buell, the leader of the race, driving for Sinden Racing this year. And there is the pit stop summary. You see that Ray was the leader when he went in, but came out in fifth. Buddy Lazier dropped from second to seventh. Dismore lost three positions. Calkin lost five. And Jeff Ward fell from fifth to 11th. Well, we talked about it earlier. Uh, Robbie was actually the second quickest car in all the practice sessions leading up to the race. So, uh, you know, he's gone from the front or the back to the front. Uh, pretty good effort right now. This is Dreyer and Reinbold racing that Robbie Buell is driving for this year. And the crew chief is John O'Gara. Let's go down to the pits and get another report. You talk about problems of uh, debris on the racetrack. Tice Carlson ran into debris on the track. I don't know if you can get a shot of his uh, front wing here. They've already changed the wing, but you can see what the damage at the 180 miles per hour can do to a race car. Carlson started towards the back, although he's been quick throughout practice and hopes to continue to move to the front. Well, one of the tough situations about starting the back, you're in the middle of a lot of action trying to get to the front, and uh, that's sometimes the result. On board with Mark Dismore, who's running in sixth position. You see, he just got past there. It's just so tight in the corners. Uh, passes come fast and furious. That's Robbie McGee also picking up a position as McGee has now climbed up to the eighth spot. Tom, you were talking about the different strategies that are unfolding on pit road about a three stop or a two stop race. What was fascinating is Greg Ray and his crew, I believe and hope to have a two stop race, but they are running so good, they stopped trying to conserve fuel and they decided, what the heck, let's play it safe and we'll make it three stops and we'll chase those two stoppers down. Well, that coupled with the fact that it's the first race under with these new smaller engines. Now they're turning more RPM, so they're actually getting worse fuel mileage than uh, last year's motors, even though the motors are smaller, and it's because of the RPM. So being the first race, the limited amount of practice and test time, uh, they're being a little more conservative up front. Well, Greg Ray, despite the fact that he's running back in fourth position, you saw, saw there as they cross the line, he is the fastest on the racetrack. His lap was 158.214 last time, whereas the leader, Robbie Buell, is running laps around 156 and a half. Well, and the lead car in this pack is uh, Lazier, and you can see him coming through traffic. Here is McGee once again. They got that energized buddy charged up pretty well today. Now this is what happened early in the race as McGee and Eddie Cheever were battling for position and an almost spin, but a nice job of saving it by Robbie. Well, he just didn't anticipate uh, Eddie getting out of the throttle as much entering that corner and it stacked him up. Uh, Robbie was real fortunate to get away with that one. McGee up to sixth position at the moment. He is running about nine, almost 10 seconds behind the leader of the race. And that continues to be Robbie Buell with Donnie Beachler running in second spot. We want to continue to follow the progress of Allenzer Jr. He started at the rear of the field back in 24th. And Allenzer Jr. currently is running in 11th position. And just ahead of him is the 10th place car of Eddie Cheever. There they are on the front straightaway. Well, and that, the red and white car right in front of him, Sam Hornish. So you see little Al get by Cheever there. 
Jones will put him up in the top ten. Tom, that seems to be the favorite move unfolding for Al Lutzer Jr. He likes to dip almost down below, not the white line, but the yellow line in turn one. About 20 laps ago, though, he tried that as he was trying to overtake his cousin, Robbie Unser. And I'll tell you what, guys, they had an accident. It's just nobody told them. <laughs> Well, you know, you know how cousins are. They can be pretty competitive, and uh, little Al's doing a good job. Obviously, from past experience, we know Al sometimes isn't the best qualifier, but you get him in the race, and he's going to go forward. Trying to pick up another position. That is the rookie, Sam Hornish Jr., the youngest driver in the field, who's running in ninth position, was running in ninth. Al Unser Jr. passes him, puts him back to tenth, and now here comes Scott Goodyear up to challenge Hornish up from the Formula 2000 ranks, and Scott Goodyear right alongside him as they enter turn number two. Goodyear. Goodyear's one of those cars that have all the instrumentation right on the steering wheel. So instead of having to try to look through the steering wheel to the dash, the dash is part of the steering wheel. Well, tomorrow is Super Sunday on ABC. Before kickoff, it's Palmer, Nicholas, Player, and Watson, the senior skins game at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, followed by a star-studded lineup and a preview of the big game. Super Bowl 34 pregame shows at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 Pacific. Then the Rams and the Titans go at it in the biggest event in television, Super Bowl 34. It's live on ABC at 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 Pacific. And during halftime, you'll want to see Walt Disney Attractions Tapestry of Nations inspired by the year-long millennium celebration at Walt Disney World. ABC, your home for Super Bowl 34 and the NHL All-Star Game. And we understand that, oh, that's... Al well, Unser Jr. who has slowed and pulled on to the pit lane. Problems for Al Unser Jr. here on lap number 66. Well, that's obviously a tough start. I mean, he was doing such a great job coming from the back. And we can see some smoke at times coming from the rear of that car. And so Al Unser Jr. here on the 66th. And we also have a problem with uh, John Herb who has apparently had some suspension problems, and he is off the racetrack. Well, the good news is it's got all four wheels on it, so it wasn't any big contact. So once again, the caution flies over Walt Disney World Speedway. And Junior climbs out of his Gallus ECR tickets.com racer. It's a as we pick up uh, from the monster.com blim, you can see uh, well, that, John Herb there with the uh, suspension problem. Real fortunate, he slowed down right in a real bad spot, right in the apex of that corner, and everybody did a great job trying to get around him. And we understand that Greg Ray had to go through the grass to avoid Herb there in turn number four. Down to Vince. Al Unser Jr. has climbed out of the race car and conferred with owner Rick Gallus. Uh, Al, what happened? Uh, the engine let go, something in the bottom end of it let go. How was the car running up until that point? The car was really doing a good job. I uh, I had a little bit too much push to the thing, but um, the car was working well. We were able to get through traffic pretty well. When I get by myself, we were able to run pretty good. But um, you know, I'm just uh, I just want to thank Tickets.com. They did, you know, and my sponsors, Prolong, Bosch, everybody, Firestone, the teams here. We got a good team. We got a good car. I know it's not the way you wanted it to end up, but what did you think of the uh, the racing competition out there? It's good. It's a lot of fun. I, I was having a great time, but you're always having a great time when you're passing people. So uh, we were having fun. I think, um, you know, Greg, I saw him, and I think he was the one that we were going we to be racing with real soon. Allen Sir Jr., not having fun anymore. He's done for the day. But he can't wait for the Indianapolis 500. Watch for him in May. ABC's presentation of the Delphi Indy 200 at Walt Disney World will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Delphi Indy 200 is under caution once again. Robbie Buell is the leader of the race in his Dreyer and Reinbolts and Purex sponsor G-Force. It's interesting to see. We got a good mix of the chassis manufacturers there, Bob. Uh, Riley Scott making a big move towards uh, the front from, from last year. Buell continues to lead, but Greg Ray will be on his heels when we go back to Green Jack. 
Bob, let's see if I can replay the radio relay that was on Greg Ray to his crew chief when the yellow, just before the yellow came out, it was, whoa, 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 whoa. It seems like it was traffic in front of him. He got on the binders, but he had to dip to the grass to avoid it. It's kind of like when you run at about 60 miles an hour, you come along an entrance ramp, and a little old lady pulled right out in front of you. Let's check with it, check in with Vince Welch. Robbie, Bu Robbie Buell leading the race. Buell had a near miss up in turn three, drove into the turn a little hard and got up high into the marbles, but he recovered just in time. Uh, John O'Gara, the chief mechanic for the team, said Buell very happy with the race car. They made a slight adjustment to the wing right. and a slight uh, stagger change, but otherwise they're very pleased. Robbie Buell said before the race, I'm going to be patient, let the race come to me. I'll eventually get to the front. He's in the front. He is off sequence though, pitted on lap number 26, and we have now completed 73 laps and under caution. This is inside Sharp's car. We can see uh, what's happening in front. Somebody slowed down, and we think it's... Uh, yeah, it's John Herb. John Herb, and these mile overs. Things happen so quick, it uh, almost caught Greg Ray out of position, and uh, very fortunate. Had to take some evasive action by going down into the grass there that separates the racetrack from pit lane. Well, these mile ovals, you have a lot of close calls, especially with all the traffic out there and the tight straightaways, tight corners, small racetracks. We have an excellent crowd on hand here at Walt Disney World Speedway today. I would say that it's almost sold out. It was a late arriving crowd because I think a lot of people were still concerned about the weather, but when they woke up this morning and saw the bright sunshine, they headed for the racetrack and have really uh, turned out in numbers here this afternoon. One other driver we might mention having problems is Stefan Gregoire. He was the fastest in the practice, but he has been on pit road several times during this caution period and has dropped back to 15th position. Well, what's really interesting, most of these guys are fighting an understeer or a push situation, but they've been loose at the back of the car, which is unusual compared to everybody else. Laps down. Green flag is out. And Buddy Lazier challenges Greg Ray once again, and Lazier takes that car to the outside and drives wheel to wheel with Greg through the corner, and Cheever picks up second, or Lazier rather picks up second. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. Greg Ray either got caught by surprise or had a little problem with that gearbox, or was just real careful with the gearbox, but uh, uh, Bill and Lazier got a big jump on Greg Ray right there. Indeed they did. Greg Ray now back to third position. And that's Robbie McGee running in fourth and staying right with Greg Ray around the second corner and down the back stretch. Well, and there's Dismore underneath. Look at Dismore come forward underneath the Energizer car. Mark Dismore moves to fourth position now, passing Robbie McGee. In the red, white, black car. McGee in the black and yellow Energizer. Further back in the pack, there's Scott Goodyear once again, who continues to run with Eddie Cheever. Those two drivers have been running together for most of the afternoon. That's Buzz Calkins up ahead. Calkins is sixth, Goodyear seventh, and Cheever is in eighth position. Well, Buzz had done a great job early in the race, and again, maintaining his own out there. So uh, Calkins, who didn't have that great a season last year, they're opening the season uh, with a lot more strength. Well, when we talked to him earlier in the weekend, he did express a great deal of confidence. They apparently have added some new people to the team and think they are more prepared for this year than they ever have been again or before in the Indy Racing League. Tom, one of the situations that happens with these new 3.5 liter engine configurations is if you get out of the throttle, it's almost like restrictor plate racing in NASCAR. The car, it takes a little bit longer to get it up to full song again. That was the case with Greg Ray. Backed out of the throttle a little bit when he was dicing back and forth, and by the time he got that giant spring wound up again, he lost a couple of spots. Well, not only are the motors just a little smaller and a little less horsepower, but the uh, the power band, RPM-wise, is a lot smaller. So uh, it's real critical that you're on, on top of things when you're trying to come up through those gears. Stefan Gregoire is still on pit road. Vince Welch, what's the problem there? He's been, he's been having handling problems throughout much of the day, and they finally came in and decided they were going to change the height of the rear wing. But once they got Gregoire into the pits, they were unable to get the bolts out of the wing itself to even make the adjustment. 
So at this point, they've just turned off the car, a lengthy stop and a very disappointing day for Stefan Gregoire, who is the fastest consistently in the limited practice time. Well, again, they're trying to put rear downforce on that car, and everybody else is fighting the opposite problem. They're, everybody else is looking for front downforce, so uh, a bit unusual. They might have a shock or something else going bad that's causing that, that handling problem in that car. Gregoire driving for Dick Simon Racing, again in the year 2000. Scott Goodyear running in the seventh position. Eddie Cheever right behind him. Buzz Calkins just ahead of him. Again, the yellow cars, Goodyear. It's an easy one to pick out, Bob. Jacques Lazier is running ahead of uh, Buzz Calkins, but Lazier is not on the same lap as the leader. He's being shown in 15th position. There are 14 cars that are on the lead lap at the moment. And again, for those of you just joining us, Al Unzer Jr. in his debut with the Indy Racing League is out of the race. He'll be probably listed in 24th finishing position of the 26th. The engine just let go, he said. Well, and that engine problem is, is one of the reasons that Foy has stayed with the 90-degree crank. We, we heard him talk about something in the lower end. One of the problems with the 180-degree crank, Bob, is the fact that it causes a little more vibration. And Foyt, for one, was worried about reliability, and it showed up with Al's car. And yet, Tom, he was beginning to wonder whether A.J. Foyt should change engines yesterday. He said, should I, shouldn't I? And actually, he said, what the heck? We've got a gambling casino for a sponsor. Let's just roll the dice. Well, the battle for the lead now really heats up as we are on board with Buddy Lazier, and he is right on the rear wing of Greg Ray as they head down the back stretch. Well, actually, that's, that's Robbie Buell right in front I'm of him. I'm sorry, Buell the leader. Again, you can see what traffic does, though. It's just so difficult that he, the Buell was able to get by, but uh, Lazier had to wait a little bit to try to get a run on this traffic situation. And that allows Buell to stretch out the advantage a little bit once again. It's up to eight tenths of a second. Again, Dismore right in front of Goodyear, the yellow car. Dismore is the red, black, and white car. This Ray. is looking back from Dismore into Ray. Greg looked to the inside there going into the corner but could not find the room to pass and so Ray remains back in for spot. Well, it's a battle for position, Bob, so you're not gonna give it up very easy. Robbie Buell coming up to put another lap on John Hollinsworth. That will put him three laps down. John back in 21st position. Buell looking pretty good here. Well, he really is. Uh, the key to this racetrack is getting off a of turn one, and they've got that figured out. Those of you just joining us, we welcome you to Walt Disney World Speedway, Orlando, Florida, the opener of the Northern Light Indy Racing League schedule for the year 2000, the Delphi Indy 200. Robbie Buell is the leader with 90 laps completed, 110 to go. Buddy Lazier running about 2.3 seconds behind Buell. Dismore is third, Ray fourth, and Robbie McGee running in fifth position. Al Unser Jr. in his IRL debut here this afternoon has dropped out with engine problems and will finish somewhere around 24th position. Well, even Al dropping out, he's got a smile on his face because he was passing cards. It, it's been so long since he's passed anybody that uh, he was pretty excited about it. Oh, three abreast racing there. Robbie McGee and Scott Goodyear almost touched wheels as they paddled for position for the sixth spot. Again, on this little tight racetrack, you sometimes have got to force the issue, and uh, Scott Goodyear did a nice job there. Guys, maybe one of the reasons why Robbie Buell is showing a lot of muscle, despite the fact that he didn't compete in most of the IRL last year after the Indianapolis 500, is the addition to the Dreyer and Reinbold team of Mitch Davis. Do you remember Mitch Davis? He was the guy that with the, uh, with, with one guy by the name of Jeff Ward decided to take the world by storm last year, unsponsored, they really ran well. I gotta wonder, Tom, how important is the communication between engineer and driver? Let's check in first with Vince Welch. Buddy Lazier is running second and he is content to run second. The owner Ron Himmelgarn said just a moment ago that they'll take it easy, run second Crash. place and make their move Crash. when it's time. Bob Jenkins? 
and contact with the wall up between turns two and three. Yeah, it is. It is Robbie, Robbie Unzer who has crashed and damaged the rear end of his car. Well, pretty good contact there. It's yes, it was. Rear end out of the thing. So the caution coming out on lap number 96, 95 complete here at the Delphi Indy 200. There was a lot of traffic behind Robbie Unzer after he came to a stop in the racetrack and several drivers did a good job of avoiding that car which was coming to a stop in, as you can see, the middle of the racetrack. Well, again, we've got the new swim system to try to keep the wheels and tires close to the race car in those kinds of accidents, and it obviously has done its job again. As we near the halfway point of the race, we're going to uh, undoubtedly have some pit stops, but not until pit lane is open. There is Tony Stewart, the NASCAR uh, Rookie of the Year last year, Vince. Well, and Tony Stewart is the uh, part owner of this uh, team that Robbie Unser was driving for. What happened on the track with Robbie? I said the car just jumped out from underneath him. Uh, he just called in about two laps earlier and said he was tied in and loose off. So uh, evidently we didn't get the car snugged up enough on that first stop for him. This was a, quite a challenge for this team. You're trying to engineer the car basically for the first time. Uh, now Robbie in a, in a difficult situation, hopping into the car with few laps. Yeah, that's probably the hardest thing was just putting him in a car that, that he hasn't driven this weekend and he didn't get a chance to come test here. But, uh, you know, he's done a pretty good job getting reacclimated in such a short amount of time. I just wish I could have uh, been a better engineer for him this weekend. Glad to see you at the racetrack. Tony Stewart. You heard Tony talk about the car was tight in and loose off. Tight in, it was pushing. He couldn't turn it getting in, but, but on the exit to the corner, the back end wanted to jump out, and that's exactly what happened. Well, the pits are open now, so we're going to see a lot of pit stops, and really this is a break for Robbie Buell because he can now get back in sequence. Well, no question. He, he pitted early, but this will get him back on the sequence. So, uh, I'm ready to pit in. Vince nice Welch has an update quickly on uh, Davey Five, Hamilton. Davey Hamilton has been transported to Sand Lake Hospital via ambulance simply for cautionary examinations. He is awake and alert. Good news. Jack Aroot. And Vince, the leader is on pit road. Robbie Buell, what they're going to do is go up one, two turns on the right front wing. They've also changed the stagger just a little bit, going up what we call one point. And now they've reset the field. They've got to wait for some heavy race traffic because they're at the end of pit road. Robbie Buell's on his way. Well, you can see there's two things you do to the chassis. You can add front wing and you can add stagger. Make the right rear bigger to, than the left rear, and that'll help the car turn or eliminate some of that understeer situation. Well, he was beaten out of the pits by Mark Dismore. There is Mark, who completed his work very quickly. We'll be back with more live coverage of the Delphi Indy 200 in just a moment. Welcome back to the Delphi Indy 200 at Walt Disney World Speedway, Orlando, Florida. We're at the halfway point. Donnie Beachler is the leader under caution. He's off pit sequence. Let's go to Vince Welch. Scott Goodyear came into this race with high hopes, currently running ninth after entering the last pit stop seventh. They're trying to fix some handling problems. Of course, it's a big race weekend, but it's a big football weekend as well with the Super Bowl taking place at the Georgia Dome. This race team knows all about football because it's co-owned by San Diego Chargers quarterback Jim Harbaugh. Yesterday, Harbaugh and driver Scott Goodyear were talking strategy. Jimmy, I remember last year's race, the fuel mileage was really important. You've got to keep me honest on fuel mileage today. Okay, we'll handle that tomorrow, Scott. Maybe just as important, Titans versus the Rams tomorrow's big game. How are the Titans going to account for Marshall Falk coming out of the back? Number 28? I don't know. I take that 28 car, I mean that 28 player rather, and tell him to go trade paint and uh, bump. <laughs> now, when Azakim and Isaac Bruce clear out of the middle, that's going to leave Marshall Falk with a four way go underneath. Absolutely. After his pitch stop, he can just drop it on the ground, light the tires up, and go right through that defense, and off he goes, right down the end zone. Sounds like a winner. I'm going to do it. Jim Harbaugh, how's the race going for Scott Goodyear and your team? It's going okay. I'm, uh, we didn't have a chance to practice this morning, or uh, yesterday we got rained out, but all in all, I think we're doing okay. We're hanging in there, not making any mistakes. Prediction on the Super Bowl tomorrow? I mean, there's no teams I don't like, so uh, I'll be rooting for both of them. But a uh, little special feeling for uh, Marshall Falk and Paul Justin playing with the Rams. That's Jim Harbaugh, part owner of this team, San Diego Chargers quarterback. Let's go to Jack Aroot. Well, Vince, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the offseason about some of the championship auto racing teams that may compete in the Indianapolis 500. Derek Walker, you compete. 
in the kart series, but now you're gonna go IRL racing, not just for Indy as well. Well, we're gonna do both, Jack. We've got a new program, we're gonna start at Phoenix, and uh, we're looking forward to it. And your driver is none other than, well, you're not 19 anymore, right, Sarah Fisher? I'm still 19, I'll be 19 until October, so still teenager. Under 21, is she legal to drive in IndyCar competition? Well, she's legal, all right. The question is, how fast are you going to go? And we're <laughs> going to find out real soon. What's the sponsorship package for, Sarah? Well, we've got Cummins back again uh, as our primary sponsor, and we've got uh, Mead, uh, Carbonless Paper, come on board, who've been with uh, Sarah before. Well, guys, if you have never seen Sarah Fisher in a midget, you should see her there. But I'll tell you what, the way she performed in the IRL last year, she got my attention. Well, I have seen her race many times in midgets, and she is a very good race driver. These aerial shots being brought to you by the Monster.com blimp. Monster.com operates two blimps in the U.S. This one named Trump, which is the name of that big green monster at the front of the blimp. Well, we have now passed the halfway point. We're 103 laps into this race. The cleanup continues over between turns two and three. That's where Robbie Unzer crashed. He got out of the car under his own power. There are the top ten with... 103 of 200 laps completed, and Donnie Beachler is our fourth leader of the day. And, Bob, well, let me update you one unfolding situation with Robbie Buell. As he pulled back out, he radioed to his crew and said, next time we pit, and he said, I hope it's the last time, make sure you have a lot of guys to push me. I think I've got a clutch problem. Oh, boy. And he'll need, a, need at least one more pit stop before this is over. Well, again, uh, we've got new cars here this year, Bob. So these are teething problems, and a lot of these things don't show up until race situations. You know, you can do a lot of testing. Uh, Buell and these guys haven't done much testing, and that might hurt them. But uh, a lot of these things don't show up until you have race situations. Well, Robbie Buell is currently running in the fourth position. The top five are Beechler, Dismore, Lazier, Buddy Lazier, Buell, and Eddie Cheever, who is running in the fifth position. Once again, the big game is tomorrow, but coming up next here on ABC, an exclusive look at the 1999 NFL season. Surprises, disappointments, and the turnarounds. NFL Films and ABC Sports taking you to the locker rooms, to the playing fields, on the road to Super Bowl next on ABC. Your home for Super Bowl 34 and the NHL All-Star Game. On board with John Hollinsworth, who is running in the 20th position, some three laps down. Vince has an update on Buddy Lazier, who is running third. Buddy Lazier is running well, and he's very happy with the car, but not happy with the condition of the racetrack. Says there are a lot of marbles on the track that's making the racing very difficult. Says track position will mean everything down the stretch. On board with Lazier here as he gets set to take the green flag and resume competition. You can hear, uh, you can hear him going through the gears, trying to get the right selection to have the most uh, torque that he can have for this restart at the speed green they're going. Green flag, green flag. This is inside Dismore now. This is Dismore. Now the car at the front of the field is not the leader. That is Tice Carlson. That black car, number 88. That's Donnie that 98 is Donnie Beachler yep. and the leader of the race. Then comes Dismore, Lazier, Buell, and the others. And some great racing going on back there. That's Buell who is up at the top side of the racetrack and getting past. Well, he is. I don't know if he's had some kind of problem, but a few guys got by him here, but now it looks like he's getting back to speed. So uh, I don't know if it's a gearbox problem coming up through the gears, but it looks like he's got it going again. That was Eliseo Salazar who took the fifth position from Buell as they came off the fourth corner. And again, we've got them stacked up too deep back here. Well, this is Jeff great. Ward. It's great racing, Bob. I mean, these guys are having a, a great time out there. Uh, Sometimes they're smiling, but they're, they've got a lot of excitement. And up front, Mark Dismore sneaks to the inside of Donnie Ooh. Beachler going into turn number two, and Dismore comes out with the lead. A great pass. It might have surprised Dismore a little bit. And Buddy Lazier is right behind Beachler now. And he goes to second. Well, he does. Beachler has a little understeer on the exit, so he can't get after the throttle and enable the buddy to get a big, big run. 
Vince has more on Mark Dismore, who's now shown as the leader. Well, Dismore's strategy is playing out perfectly. He said before the race he just wanted to let it sort out and go for a clean finish, get the good season off to a good start. They ran full tanks on Thursday, concentrating on the race setup, and that's uh, paying off so far. Accident right out in front. Jacques it's the 33 car, Jacques Lazier. For the second time this afternoon, Jacques Lazier brings out the caution. The car is stopped right under the starter stand. Well, you can see some debris here hanging at the back of the car. Um, it doesn't look like he hit the wall that hard, but that's a real fast corner. And again, that just some, the attenuator obviously had some damage, so, but it obviously did some of its job. That's the sixth caution of the afternoon that's waving over Walt Disney World Speedway. There's the damage on Jacques Lazier's car. He's still sitting in the cockpit. 111 laps have been completed. And we have 13, make that 12 cars that are currently on the lead lap. It didn't look like that much damage to uh, Lazier's car, but uh, it got in backwards in a fast part of the racetrack. So uh, the safety things they've done to these cars, that uh, attenuator at the back of the car ob obviously absorbed some great energy right there. Riding along with Jeff Ward here, who's back in ninth position in the A.J. Foy entered car. So under caution, once again, we'll take another break and be back with more of our live coverage of the Delphi Indy 200 on ABC Sports. Sixth caution of the day at Walt Disney World Speedway for Jacques Lazier, his car coming to a stop right under the starter stand. He has been placed on a backboard and put in the ambulance, but he gave the crowd a big wave when he was put in there, indicating that Hopefully everything is going to be okay. Well, Robbie McGee has been in for an unscheduled pit stop. Vince, what's going on? Early in the race, Robbie McGee touched with Eddie Cheever. This was the damage on the front of the wing. You can see right here the, the uh, taking out part of the front wing. Eventually, the damage worked its way back. This part of the front wing was rubbing the tire of the front left, and you can see the result on the tire. It was leaving a groove, so they brought McGee in, changed the tire, removed the nose, sent McGee back out since they're under yellow. He came back in with no nose on the car. They put the nose on, and boom, back out is Robbie McGee. Lost no time out on the track. Did not lose a lap. Well, he drops back to 12th position, the last car on the lead lap. We'll be back with more of our coverage of the Delphi Indy 200 at Walt Disney World after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Should be going back to green here in just a moment. 118 of the 200 laps at Walt Disney World Speedway and the Delphi Indy 200 have been completed. With Mark Dismore at the front of the field, we're ready for about the last 80 laps, Tom. What do you think here? Well, it's going to be interesting. Some of these guys are trying the fuel mileage strategy. Dismore, for one, is going to have to stop again, but there's a couple guys towards the back that maybe can go the distance. So the question is going to be, are we going to have another yellow before this thing's over? And it, if not, it's going to put a premium on the pit crews. Down to you, Jack Aroot. I'm talking here with Chris Economac, a longtime guy at ABC Sports, and I wanted to tell you that one thing that happened was that Mark Dismore pitted about 20 laps ago. Now, I asked Tom Kelly, was, does that mean that he is going to have to pit again? And he said, we'd like not to, but he said, we can't go the rest of the distance. So I asked him, when are they going to pit? He said, quite frankly, we need a late yellow to make our strategy work. Let's check in with Vince Welch. Buddy Lazier never ran full tanks on this race car, so obviously the Himmelgarn Racing Team is very happy about the way the car is performing. Second place, Ron Himmelgarn, the team owner, told me, very patient, we're going to just run second place. We'll decide when to make our move, but we have to come in for fuel, so Buddy Lazier has to make another stop. The Riley and Scott chassis has been very good so far. Jack Aroot? Vince, the problem with uh, Donnie Beachler's car could be that they're having problems with the left front sticking on the car. And what that means is when he goes into the corner, he just can't get the nose to stay planted. He's been running well. He's very happy with the way the car is performing. He just says it's a wild ride when they go into the corner. Donnie Beachler running in the third position at the moment as Mark Dismore is the leader. We'll be going green when we come back. Number one tourist destination, Walt Disney World. And there is one of the new rides in Tomorrowland, the Indy Speedway. 
and it even has a simulated yard of bricks. You too can become an Indy Speedway driver here at Walt Disney World. All right, we're set to go back to racing in the Delphi Indy start. 200. This is really the only e-ticket ride here at Disney World, though, no, Bob. <laughs> Dismore, flag, Lazier, Beachler, and Cheever take the green, and here we go. Oh, and look at Cheever pick up third position from Beachler. Again, Eddie, he's been around this place a few times. Uh, winner last year here, and obviously right there at the end of this one. That's right. Don't count him out by any means. There is Eliseo Salazar going to fourth position. The blue and red car, one of Foyt's car, is doing a nice job up the fourth spot. He had a problem early in the event, but uh, since getting on track, he's been doing a fine, fine job. There is second and third as they pursue Mark Dismore, Buddy Lazier, and Eddie Cheever. Mark Dismore has now led in five consecutive IRL races. He led the final four races last year and scored his first career win in the season closer at Texas. Well, let's uh, find out how Robbie Unzer is after that crash. Well, he's okay, and I just may have asked him the most stupid question any pit announcer can ask a driver. I said, what happened? He said, if I knew what happened, I wouldn't be here. But Robbie, tell me a little bit about the ride. You know, it was kind of a weird day. We didn't get much time, which, you know, is kind of nobody's fault, but uh, the car ended up just jumping out on me. I think if you guys go back and look at the tape, it could be that I just screwed up or it could be that the car actually broke. I don't know. What about the future for Robbie Unser? Is it with TriStar Racing or are you still trying to put your deal together? Well, I tell you, I, I really like running with uh, Larry and Tony and TriStar, and I think if we could get some support and some sponsors to keep going, we would be. Petromali helped us out this, you know, race, and I'm really happy about it. We're going to have a, you know, their support, but really, we need a good sponsor. Guys? It's interesting. Robbie uh, said the car just jumped out, and you heard Tony Stewart earlier say the car was tied in, loose off. Again, when it's tied in, you put a lot of steering into the car, and then when you get to the exit, sometimes the thing will snap if it wants to go loose because you've got so much turning input already in the car. And the Larry to whom Robbie referred was Larry Curry, who is the uh, partner with Tony Stewart in Tri-Star Motorsports. We haven't talked a great deal, believe it or not, about Greg Ray. He did lead 46 laps of this race, and here he is now in a battle for sixth position with Beachler, and he takes sixth spot. But Greg has not really been a factor here in the last several laps. But again, let's not count him out with 70 to go. Right. He's obviously going forward right now, and uh, Greg, he's a smart guy. He he's, knows that the race is 200 laps long, and uh, I think he'll be there towards the end. And how about this Eliseo Salazar in the car on the right of your screen? He is sneaking up on Eddie Cheever here for the third position. Meanwhile, Scott Sharp has slowed and come into the pits once again. Scott with gearbox problems earlier. They fixed it. It took him about uh, nine or so laps to, and Bob, to get And, Bob, the problem is on the right front wing. The upper wing panel has broken off. And they're going to make a nose exchange because there's no way that it can run that way. It's literally like having a door flapping on the right side of the car. These wings are interchangeable, and they're going to put it on and send it back out. Well, those wings don't just break by themselves, Jack. Obviously, that was contact in close racing out there in the racetrack, and we've seen a lot of it today. Buddy Lazier, we're on board with him. He's only just a few car lengths behind the leader of the race, Mark Dismore. There you see the speeds last lap, and Chiba, the uh, Lazier rather was actually a little bit quicker than Mark Dismore. Well, again, some of that, Bob, might be because of traffic. You can see that uh, that Dismore's run up on some traffic, and so, a lot of times that'll hold the guy up and can make a big difference in lap times. Lazier makes the pass and now has no cars between himself and Dismore. And again, Buddy Lazier is in that Riley and Scott chassis. And he may bring that thing home as a victor here today in uh, one of its first outings. Well, it's a great job. The new Riley Scott obviously has uh, made a big jump forward. Look at this traffic Whoa. right here. And we, we have a yellow. spin over between turns one and two. A car sliding to the inside is Sam Hornish Jr., a rookie. And again, I don't think he made any contact with the wall. The car just slid to the grassy area uh, to the inside of the racetrack. But it is going to necessitate our seventh caution of the day. Well, you can see him spinning the wheels. He sort of got him stuck now. But these guys are dodging some bullets out there. You don't yeah. spin that often. These things would not hit. 
Well, he was running in 14th position, the rookie was, when he spun coming off of corner number one. Cornish is another graduate of the Formula 2000. Series. Here's the replay. Well, again, you saw he was in a lot of traffic right in front of him. It might have taken some air off that car and made the thing jump loose on him, but he was in a tight, tight traffic situation. And we also have some debris on the front stretch, so uh, the track officials will retrieve that and get Sam Hornish Jr.'s car off the track and we'll be ready for more racing. Stay with us for more from Orlando. Stay left, stay left, you're all clear, now you're clear. You're all the way behind you, go ahead. Back at Walt Disney World, pit stops being made. Buddy Lazier driving out of the pits. Mark Dismore made a very quick pit stop, 6.8 seconds, and he, I believe, is going to feed everybody else out of the pits. Well, that's an awesome stop. They obviously didn't have to put a whole lot of fuel in that thing to go the distance, Bob, so that could be a factor. There are 61 more laps to go in oh, this event. Mark Dismore looking for his second consecutive victory in what is now the Northern Light. Indy Racing League. Down to Jack Aroot. Well, Tom, they may not have had to put a whole lot of fuel in, and one of the reasons may be because they didn't really need that much, but they want to conserve as much as possible. By my calculation, this tank still holds about 20 gallons of methanol. The problem is they don't want to come back in. They're going to have to conserve fuel just a bit. Greg Ray stalled coming out of the pits. They've had to push him back, and they still haven't gotten that car started. Now it appears, nope, still not going. And that has to be ironic for that team because they joked before the pits were open that the way they could make up some spots is to rely upon, and this is the quote from them, our superior pit stop abilities. Well, I think they've got a gearbox problem there. That thing won't go forward. Vince, what do you know? It does indeed look like a gearbox problem. They uh, are uh, putting a rear assembly on, and this is going to be the end of the uh, chances for Greg Ray to start this season with the victory. Remember, it was a gearbox last year that knocked Ray out of the race, and he ended up finishing 21st. A long job ahead now for this uh, Team Menard uh, race uh, crew to get the box off. Now, Eddie Cheever running third. Cheever running third. They put a little bit of front wing and also uh, added uh, some, uh, of course, changed the tires and added fuel. Otherwise, Eddie Cheever is running uh, very well. Owen Snyder, the chief mechanic, said, we're happy, and why not? They're running in third place with a shot at victory. He said, we're out for the duration, and what a win this would be for Cheever. Not only is he running the Riley and Scott chassis, but also the lone representative of the Infinity Motor, and Cheever says, once this Infinity gets a win, there will be a lot more believers in the engine. Jack Aroot? Well, Vince, you know, Mark Dismore has a brand new sponsor, and if you remember at Texas when he scored his first career victory, it took him about 15 minutes to find victory lane. He got lost. His new sponsor is in charge of what they call OnStar, that global positioning service where they can call you. I asked Tom Kelly about it. He says, well, now we've got a button on board. He can call OnStar. We'll make sure he doesn't miss victory lane this time. Well, again, the standings here kind of jumbled. Robbie McGee is the leader of the race. He last pitted on lap 122, so he's off sequence. The leaders have been, besides McGee, currently the leader, Eddie Cheever has led a lap. So is Billy Boat, Donnie Beachler, Mark Dismore, Greg Ray, and Robbie Buell has actually led the most laps, 47. Greg Ray has led 46. And John Hollinsworth is having difficulty getting out of the pits. From his onboard camera, it looks like... Uh, going to push him uh, on the pit apron and possibly behind the wall. We're seeing gearbox problems here, Bob. Again, they lighten up the gearbox to try to make it safer for the driver, but it's obviously caused some problems. Super Sunday on ABC tomorrow before the kickoff. It's Palmer, Nicholas, and Player and Watson, the senior skin game at noon Eastern. Then a star-studded lineup and a preview of the big game, uh, Super Bowl 34, the pregame show at 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific, and then the Rams and the Titans in the biggest event in television, Super Bowl 34. It's live on ABC at 6 o'clock Eastern tomorrow, 3 o'clock Pacific. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Artsin Dare is the best rookie right now. Uh, at least that is uh, the, the rookie this to the front, 13th position. Jared Schrader is 14th, Nicholas Johnson 15th. So uh, three of them running there uh, right nose to tail. Well, they've done a nice job staying out of trouble, Bob. This is a tight racetrack, a tough little place to get around, and uh, they're doing a super job. 
Once again, it's Tice Carlson in that blue car that is at the tail end of the lead lap as they come down to take the green flag and restart. Robbie McGee is several cars back. Here's Mark Dismore, who is in second position. And Dismore getting passed there by Lazier. Well, that's a Lazier on the outside. He just radioed to his crew and said he was had trouble the first couple laps on sticker tires, but uh, doesn't look like he's having a whole lot of trouble right now. As a matter of fact, he's taken the lead. He's also passed Robbie McGee. And look at this. Look at the traffic. Oh, man. <laughs> Two and three wide down the straightaway. Look at the smoke. We got oh, smoke. Oh, we got a out. car smoking badly here. Maybe that was tire smoke, was it? I don't know. It, it wasn't that far out of the group, but I don't think he'd be spinning them that hard in that position. But uh, Well, someone slowing down, and it's Mark Dismore. Gearbox it's pressure, Dismore slowing pressure. down after a great race. And then listen to this. You heard the gearbox. Another gearbox is going to ride, yep. guys. You heard him on the radio. A gearbox problem. Stay down low. And once again, a big disappointment for the Greenfield in the Indiana native. Next time, we'll take a look. We're going to call him in. Drops down to the pit Here entrance. Well, he's still able to shift downshift yeah. it anyway. He's able to pump a couple gears in there. And he goes into his pit box, and the crew will take a look, but it's going to eliminate Mark Dismore from any chance of winning here this afternoon after he led 30 laps of this event. So Buddy Lazier now has the lead on the racetrack by just about two seconds over Eddie Cheever. It's the first race that Lazier has led since Atlanta last July. He only led five laps in all of 1999. Well, again, there's a lot of things that make a race team, some of its equipment, and this Riley Scott is definitely going to open some eyeballs right now. No question about that. Here is second and third, Cheever and McGee. And that's Cheever in the red, white, and blue car. And, uh, the Energizer Bunny right behind the uh, looking black. Robbie McGee, of course, was the Rookie of the Year at the Indianapolis 500 last year. Here is Robbie Buell in fourth position. Now he just went to the inside of Scott Sharp, but remember that Scott Sharp is 13 laps down, running back in 19th position. Scott Goodyear, with whom we are on board right now, is in fifth position, about four seconds behind the leader, Lazier. Seo Salazar, who's running sixth. Jeff Ward right behind him. His point teammate is running seventh. We're on board with Jeff right now. You can hear him have to get out of the throttle for traffic, and that really kills your momentum. It's Ayrton Dare just ahead of Jeff Ward. Donnie Beachler, who was leading this race, has dropped back to eighth position. Buzz Calkins running ninth. And Billy Boat is the last car on the lead lap in 10th position with now less than 50 laps to go. Again, Beachler's dropped back a little bit, but he's trying to go the way on, on uh, without stopping. Yep. So uh, it might work out. We'll have to wait and see. Eliseo Salazar has had a good run here today, showing in sixth position. That's Salazar on the inside there in the blue and red car. Jack, what's the story on Mark Dismore? You know on the back of the gearboxes, Tom and Bob, where they had that little cooler? Well, that's exactly what became dislodged and ran all the gear oil out of the new transverse gearbox. They have reattached the small cooler. They have added all new gear oil. They are about to refire Mark Dismore. They'll have to watch the pressers, but they think they're going to be able to send him back out on the racetrack. Jack, where'd that, where'd that oil go? Did it go to the racetrack? Or is it... I'm afraid I didn't see a lot more of it come out on pit road, so it must be out there somewhere. Hopefully disperse someplace where it doesn't become a factor in the groove. Well, we would have seen some results of that I'm by sure now. I'm sure we would have, yeah. 
Do you remember when we heard the report of about a lot of smoke? I begin to wonder if maybe that's where a lot of it went. We thought it might have been tire smoke. Maybe it was gear oil smoke. Well, again, here is Scott Goodyear running fifth. Up ahead of him is Robbie McGee, and up ahead of him is Robbie Buell. Who's you can running see third. the 33 on Scott's wheel. That indicates uh, the amount of fuel that uh, would be left in the car. When he sees that on that wheel, he's got to be looking for the pits in a short amount of time. The tanks hold 35 gallons, Bob, so uh, they're giving themselves a little bit of a cushion being the first race on these new cars. You can hear him blip the throttle a little bit. He's trying to get back after it, but he's got to wait on it a little bit. Drivers don't like that, but many times there's nothing you can do about it. Sit and fight it. Vince has more on Lazier. Vince. Buddy Lazier running in front, and his car is handling better. Initially, when he went out on the sticker tires, the car wasn't handling quite as well, but the tires have worn down. Now it is handling very smoothly. Ron Himmelgarn extremely pleased. They didn't get this car until January 4th, so they've been under the gun as far as testing is concerned. The Riley and Scott car, of course, now part uh, owned by Reynard. A uh, Reynard was the car that Buddy Lazier was driving when he won the Indianapolis 500 in 19. And the best finish for a Riley and Scott chassis was in New Hampshire in 1998, a sixth. Well, in, in NASCAR, if a Ford wins on Sunday, they sell a bunch on Monday. We might sell some Riley Scott stuff <laughs> Monday. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if we have a win by another guy that would be the first three-time winner, and that would be Eddie Cheever Jr., we would literally have a lot of celebration because he's running that Infinity engine, the lone Infin Infinity. And guys, they have never won an IRL race. Again, as you look at the running order in the upper left of your screen, if you see an arrow, that indicates that a driver has either gained or lost a position in the last lap. The yellow car being good here, right behind him, the blue and red car is that point car of Salazar. There's a good uh, indication of how different the 90 degree crank sounds. When we heard Eliseo go by that speed shot there, you can hear that it's a much lower and throatier uh, sound than those running the 180 degree crank shot. Well, it really is. The 180 sounds like it's going faster, but uh, <laughs> the results are we got a Foyt car running towards the front and it's still running. 37 laps to go with Buddy Lazier, who last won at Charlotte in July of 1997, showing the way with about a three and a third second advantage over Eddie Chief. Ten cars on the lead lap. This is Robbie McGee, Scott Goodyear, and Eliseo Salazar in fourth, fifth, and sixth. Salazar in that Rio car, the, uh, the slot machines must be running pretty loose today because they're throwing a lot of sevens. Both of A.J. Foyt's cars are in the top ten with Salazar in sixth and Jeff Ward in eighth position. You know, usually, guys, this is the time where if you're the pursuer, your spotter can help you and tell you, hey, pick it up, pick it up, go faster. Don't forget, Eddie Cheever doesn't have a spotter. His radio isn't working properly. He's spotting for himself. Sometimes that could be better, Jack, because uh, a lot of times the driver's out there in the ragged edge in every corner, and uh, when you get your chief mechanic or your spotter saying, could you give me a little bit more, sometimes that's not what the driver wants to hear out there. <laughs> ABC Sports welcoming you to our first Northern Light Indy Racing League coverage of the year, the Delphi Indy 200 at Walt Disney World Speedway. Buddy Lazier is leading over Eddie Cheever by about two seconds with 167 of the 200 laps completed. We have had several cautions and a couple of wall incidents. Jacques Lazier and Davey Hamilton have been transferred to local hospitals as precautionary measures. Neither is believed to be injured seriously, but we'll wait for further reports on them before giving any official information out. Robbie Unzer also had an incident with the wall. He's okay, and Al Unzer Jr. in his debut in the Northern Light Indy Racing League is gonna be shown in 25th position next to the last. He was out earlier with an engine problem. We're watching fourth, fifth, and sixth, McGee, Goodyear, and Salazar. 
And here is Stefan Gregoire. And this has been a very disappointing day for Stefan. Fastest in the practice, the little that we had on Thursday. There was none yesterday, and there was no qualifying either, of course. But he came into this race with great hopes. He has another problem and is coming in. Right now, he's shown in 16th position, some 10 laps down. See how tall the side pods look on those new G-forces. Again, uh, from a safety standpoint, trying to improve the safety and protect the driver a little bit more. But somewhere in the air, in the wind tunnel, they found that uh, it wasn't bad aerodynamically. There's Eddie Cheever in the red, white, and blue car. Uh, Eddie, the only infinity. And we understand that Robbie McGee got Whoa. way loose, and he's loose there coming off the corner. He really is. They've got something going down, a tire or something, because that car did a serious wiggle, and he got away with it. And he is back to sixth position as both Goodyear and Salazar have been able to pass him. Again, a little smoother that time, but anytime time the car wiggles that much, usually the next couple corners, uh, the driver tries to let the heartbeat get down, and he doesn't quite press her to the floor as hard. And here's a replay way up out of the groove. And we see Salazar and Goodyear getting by him. Well, you can see it wiggle two or three times once it got out there. But now, a lot of times you pick up the marbles now when you get up that high. So going down in the next corner, he probably still has some of that effect. Second place, Eddie Cheever, and third place, Robbie Buell. And I tell you, I think I'm as impressed with Robbie Buell's performance here today as with anyone as a dryer and rival team. With Not Purex sponsorship, he has had a fantastic afternoon. No question. Bob, Not much testing uh, and just a super job. Bob, let me update you quickly on the pit condition of Eddie Cheever Jr. You won't see him back on pit road before the end of this race. They say they're going to roll the dice and go the distance. Okay, well. We'll see how many think they can go the distance. Vince has an update on Stefan Gregoire, who's still in the pits. Uh, it's been one problem after another for the Dick Simon Racing Team. An electrical problem for Stefan Gregoire this time. Earlier, it was handling and a rear wing problem. As for Robbie McGee, you saw him uh, do a little shimmy and shake. He got up high, trying crash. to avoid traffic we down low. We got a crash. One. Crash on the track. Crash between turns two and three once again. Actually, just to spin, the guy's driving her back in. And so is there a caution? There is not a caution. Yes, there is. Yes, now it is. comes out. And Cheever just took the lead. Well, Cheever was definitely catching Lazier right before the yellow came out. But, they, but he let him back around since we were under caution. This is going to provide a pretty good shootout at the end of this one, Bob. 24 laps to go. <laughs> Top three guys right there all together. How about the job for the Infinity? Uh, they worked on yeah. reliability. They they got they got the power up last year, but didn't have the reliability, and so they worked hard this winter on reliability. And they actually have a uh, phase two car motor coming here in the next couple of weeks. So Eddie should be smiling. And it was Doug Godero who spun, causing this caution. We'll take a break and be back with more in a moment to Walt Disney World Speedway. Eighth yellow of the afternoon is out here at Walt Disney World Speedway. Doug Dodaro, one of the rookies, spun, didn't hit anything over between turns two and three. The record for most cautions in this event, 10, set back in 1998. Well, we got 20 laps to go, Jack. And that is the one thing that Ronnie Dawes, the crew chief for Buddy Lazier, keeps reminding Buddy of. They are trying to conserve fuel. When I asked him if they could go the distance, they said yes. And then I looked and they crossed their fingers. So they are running the gambit as far as they can. And they have been talking to Buddy, and uncharacteristically, Buddy's been very cool in the cockpit today, just going 10-4 and acknowledging radio transmissions. What about from your end, Vince Welch? Eddie Cheever, at least keeping his sense of humor, he just radioed in and said, there isn't one wall I haven't hit today. <laughs> so Cheever driving the wheels off of it and using all the racetrack. Eddie did mention during the radio that it's very difficult for him to hear on his radio during green, so he's communicating almost exclusively during the yellow. And I must tell you that the Nissan engineers down in the pit box of Eddie Cheever, they're trying not to smile, but it's creeping out to the edges of their lips as we speak. 
If you play the numbers, here are some interesting statistics. Buddy Lazier has won two races in his IRL career, Indianapolis in 96, Charlotte in 98. Each time he started in fifth position. Where did he start today? Fifth. Keep well, an eye your final on Cheever. answer. <laughs> <laughs> Keep an eye on Cheever trying to become a three-time winner in five outings here at Walt Disney World. They're punching up for the restart. This should be good. Be Lazier, point, Cheever, point. and Buell, and here we go. Those three get a pretty good jump on the rest of the pack, Bob, so they're gone. <laughs> Ha ha to traffic out there in turn number one. Again, Robbie McGee loses several positions. He gets up high. We'll keep our eyes toward the front of the field. However, as we watch these three shoot it out for the last 17 laps of this race. Well, just before the yellow, the uh, second, third place cars were starting to close on the leader. So once uh, Lazier's tires get heated up, uh, he tends to start slowing down. Let's see what 17 laps are going to do. Bobby Buell running there in third man as he just barely got into last year's Indianapolis 500 field after numerous problems, but gave the car a great ride. The big game is tomorrow. And coming up next, right after the conclusion of our race, it's an exclusive look back at the 99 NFL season. Surprises, disappointments, and turnarounds. NFL Films and ABC Sports takes you from the locker rooms to the playing fields on the road to the Super Bowl. That's coming up next in less than 15 laps. ABC, your home for the Super Bowl 34 and the NHL All-Star Game. Bob, we know that Lazier is not going to pit. We know Cheever doesn't want to pit. What about third place? Just checked in with Robbie Buell's crew and they said, we're not coming in either. <laughs> Well, there's an interesting uh, bit of information there as Scott Goodyear had the fastest lap, but he is not running in a great deal of traffic as are the three ahead of him. Well, I don't think traffic's been a problem slowing these guys down right now. They're, they're hoofing it pretty good. So uh, the question is, does Scott have enough time to close the gap? <laughs> Right now, it looks like a duel between or among these three as Scott Goodyear is uh, almost three seconds behind the third place car of Robbie Buell. And now we see Lazier opening up a little bit more daylight between himself and Eddie Cheever. Well, again, down here at this point, turbulence becomes a problem. The cars are so evenly matched like they are in this series uh, that a little bit of turbulence can really destroy the car's handling. And, uh, going to make it very difficult for these guys to get by. Well, we're on the road to Indy, of course. There are three events before the Indianapolis 500 on Memorial Day weekend at Phoenix, Arizona, and at Las Vegas, and then the Indy 500. So the teams are learning a lot about what they will be facing at Indianapolis, and it's obvious that some teams are learning that uh, perhaps they made the right decision to, for instance, go to the Riley and Scott Chassis, and maybe for Eddie Cheever, that decision to go to Infinity last year is going to pay off big time for him. Well, we might see a few more of each of those combinations uh, before we get to Indianapolis, Bob. Well, they remain about the same interval, six tenths of a second between Lazier and Cheever, and just about that much between Cheever and Buell. Oh, look at traffic. Whoa. Though. He downshifted. You see that? He caught a gear. That's how much momentum he lost. So they got to be coming from behind. There they are. Oh, There's and here's Cheever. Cheever making a bid for the lead in turn number two. He drives it in and comes out with the lead. A great move by Eddie Cheever, and Cheever has the lead. And a gear, you see Buddy looking for different gears. Traffic, a big key on these short ovals, and it just caught Buddy out uh, a little bit right there. But can Lazier mount a challenge and come back? Well, instead, Buell comes up on Lazier now and maybe looking for second, and indeed, Robbie Buell goes to second. So Cheever has the lead now with Buell second, and all of a sudden, Buddy Lazier is third. 
couldn't understand what he was saying, could you, Tom? No, I didn't catch it, but I know one thing. He had to go up and down through the gears. We heard him say something about tires, but it was really... Well, again, after he ran a few laps under the green, the car started to go away. Just like before the last yellow, these two guys were catching him. And, uh, but whatever happens, after a few laps, the tires go away. Bobby Buell now begins to close in on Eddie Cheever. There are just a few car lengths separating those two. Buell started back in 22nd position. Sorry, four remaining rounds, four. Again, Robbie earlier was complaining about understeer or push. As he gets up behind Eddie, it's going to make the car even push worse. Real so quickly, guys, let me update you what happened to Lazier. Lazier went offline. You know the marbles, the tire wear? He got up offline, got in there, collected it up on the tires. It made them go out of balance, and he really had a wild ride there for a while. Well, he was probably forced up there by Cheever when he made the pass there in turn two, you think? Well, it was either Cheever or when he caught up to the slower traffic, and uh, the slower traffic really surprised him. Caught him off a little bit, and it looks like it's going to cost him the race. Coming up on three laps to go, and Clear Robbie behind. Buell still is very much a factor in this race. Well, and it looks like they're going to catch traffic before the three or four laps are up, so this could get real interesting. Just about five car lengths separate first and second, but Cheever coming up on some slower traffic. It all depends where he catches that traffic as to whether or not it will be a factor. Well, he's on the outside here, so that's not going to slow him up much, but you he's got in, him, he's you in got the him, got Oh, hey, Buell, Buell gets him. P1. Wow. Buell Clear takes behind. the lead. Inside, Again, inside. if they get You're offline clear. just a little bit, they catch the barbels. So Robbie Buell has taken the Stay lead, focused. and now Stay he's focused. stretching Clear out the behind. advantage. As he heads for the white flag, there one it is, more, one more it lap to go. Now we see Cheever and Lazier battling oh. again, and oh, Lazier almost crashes, he goes to the inside, but he takes second, and Scott Goodyear is right there in the thick of the battle also. That's for position, the yellow car's got a run on him. How Robbie, about Robbie Buell? Oh man, what an afternoon. We may not be Clear able to on. talk to him because we have run over our allotted man, time, but what a day for Robbie Buell, who wins the Delphi Go Indy guys, 200 at Walt Disney Let's World. Cheever, it's Lazier, it. Cheever, and Goodyear finishing second, third, and fourth. Man, what they, a race. They raced right to the finish line. Oh. I've got to give you that. Wow, what a day for Robbie Buell. Second career win from 22nd starting position in the Purex Dryer and Rainbow car. You can't start much farther back than that. That's a tremendous effort. A great win for Robbie Buell here at the Delphi Indy 200 over Buddy Lazier, Eddie Cheever, Scott Goodyear, Eliseo Salazar, Donnie Beachler, Jeff Ward, Buzz Calkins, Billy Boat, and Robbie McGee. Next, ABC Sports and NFL Films presents the Road to the Super Bowl, an in-depth look at the 1999 NFL season. Then join us tomorrow for the biggest day in television. Super Bowl pregame starts at 2 o'clock Eastern, 11 Pacific, and 6 o'clock Eastern, 3 Pacific, it is the big game, the St. Louis Rams against the Tennessee Titans in Super Bowl 34. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, continuing the tradition of excellence.